Here are seven players we think are going to have a bounce back season. First up is Patrick Laine, and he should not really be surprising because he only played 18 games last season, but he still managed nine points before suffering an upper body injury. This was the amount of discomfort initially. He is on the bench. During a game last season against the Leafs on December 14th, Laine was a victim to a slew foot and went down shoulder first into the boards. Patrick Laine as well, not putting any weight whatsoever. But prior to this injury, Laine missed nine games in October with a concussion before later becoming a healthy scratch. He then missed three games after the healthy scratch due to an illness. And unfortunately, it was just the month later when this upper body injury occurred. But out of seemingly nowhere, Laine surprised the league by entering the player assistance program to receive care for an undisclosed issue. He posted a statement to Instagram saying, after careful consideration and discussions with my support networks and the team, I recognize the importance of prioritizing my mental health and well-being. Hockey has been my passion and my life, but I have to come to realize that in order to perform at my best, I need to take this time to focus on myself. This offseason, the Montreal Canadiens were the lucky winners of the Line A sweepstakes, and they can definitely use the size and firepower on the team. If Line A stays healthy, he could be a huge benefit to their struggling power play, which ended the season with a percentage of 17.5. Line A could also greatly improve secondary scoring, which the Canadiens severely lacked last season. And who's to say that with this change of scenery and the GM not expecting him to score a set number of goals, Line A can return to his former elite self like when he played with the Jets. Now let's move on to Philip Gustafson. Following an absolute stellar 2022-23 season, Gustafson was supposed to take on the heavy workload while Wallstead continues to grow in the AHL. But it doesn't help that he's coming into this season injured because he ended his lackluster season last year with a save percentage of 899 with a 3.06 goals against average. It appeared last year that he lost all the confidence he had gained the prior season and he started losing track of the pucks in his rebound game. And during the exit interview, he mentioned he may need to see a sports psychologist during the off season. Uh, you know, how the start was last year, it was awful last year, so. The whole group came together and we, we made sure it, it wasn't going to be a start as last year and a 2-0 two, two win is, is better than anything. But he also acknowledged that he was just out of shape last season and is going to work at camp to get into the best shape he can be. But what he's got to remember is that he's still going to be the number one goalie into the new season and he has most of the same players in front of him. If he can work on his fitness, clear his head, and not get hard on himself when things aren't going the wild way, he should have absolutely no trouble maintaining a 9-10 plus save percentage. Now let's take a look at Mikhail Sergachev. Sergachev couldn't catch a break and he found himself missing most of the season due to injuries. He was injured during a game in December against the Blues when he blocked a shot with his foot. He missed the rest of the month and all of January before finally being cleared to play. In his first game back against the Rangers, he suffered a broken tibia, which by the way has happened to me and those are painful. But this only happened because Rangers Lafreniere completed a reverse hit. Sergachev's leg was caught under him when he fell to the ice and he had to be stretchered off. Greet his player as he gets taken off on the stretcher and you could see obviously the acknowledgement by Sergachev to the... He's now a member of the NHL's joke team, the Utah Hockey Club, and will have to start over with building chemistry with his new teammates. Despite being traded to a new team, he's going to be looked at as the number one guy on defense. We're going to have to watch and see how his transition goes, but expect him to have a 40 point season. Pierre-Luc Dubois absolutely trashed last season when he played with the Kings. Sure, he scored 16 goals and had 24 assists in 82 games, but that was the lowest amount he's ever scored, excluding the 2021 season when he only played in 46 games. He struggled to showcase his skills and left Kings fans dissatisfied after the trains traded Velarde, who actually only had four fewer points, but played 23 fewer games and made $4 million less than Dubois. But what really is going to sting is that the Kings traded him in the offseason to the Capitals. So Dubois will be joining a team that is fresh out of a first round sweep to the Rangers. 
This will also be his fourth team since joining the league, and the Capitals are looking to tap into his full potential. If he plays like he's capable of, he can count on having Ovechkin and Wilson as his line mates. His size and physicality will fit right in there with the Capitals. Along the wall, right on the stick of Dubois, and he scores again! But if he keeps working on his gameplay without the puck, he's gonna be a menace on the ice. Now let's talk about Darcy Camper. Camper knows what it's like to be a Stanley Cup winning goaltender. Well, I mean, what a ride. It's, it's been incredible. Uh, it's been hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's the hardest thing we've ever done. And, you know, every second's been worth it. But he found himself taking a backseat to Lindgren, who hadn't even experienced a full workload before. When Camper got a chance to play, he struggled to meet his expectations and ended the season with an 890 save percentage and a 3.31 goals against average. Camper joins the Kings after a Dubois trade and will most likely take on the starting role. He played with the Kings back in 2017, so he knows what to expect. The Kings are hoping to make it back into the playoffs, well, they'll most likely be knocked out in the first round again, but they're really hoping that Kemper's playoff experiences can just help them make it a little bit farther. And since he's already been on the team before, the transition should be easy for him to just focus solely on his play. Jamie Drysdale has yet to play a full season since 2021. Last year, he played in 34 games but only had 10 points, and Drysdale nearly missed the entire 2022 season with a shoulder injury. And then last year, he injured the same shoulder in what seemed to be an innocent hit, but he immediately went down to the locker room. At 22, he's already suffered two significant shoulder injuries to the same shoulder, which could be pretty costly in the long run. He's had the entire offseason to focus on rehab and working towards the new season. Drysdale will most likely stay on the second defensive pairing and work on the second power play unit. Just look for him to recognize the importance of the season and for him to boost his gameplay. And if he can return with a breakout season, expect him to get at least 30 points. Sean Couturier, fresh off being named the Flyers captain, had quite a disappointing season last year. He was even a healthy scratch several times due to his inconsistency. However, there has to be some leeway because he missed the entire 2022 season while recovering from back surgery. He finished with 11 goals and 27 assists in 74 games. This is the lowest scoring year when he played over 60 games. The Flyers will still probably continue to just look at him as the number one center because they're also going to be busy helping Mitchkov transition into the league. And realistically, as long as he stays healthy, there's no doubt he could score over 20 goals this next season. So there you have it, seven players who we think are going to have a bounce back season. Don't forget to leave a comment and let us know if you agree with our choices. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to throw them our way and we'll see what we can do next. Leave a like, throw a dart through the subscribe button, and as always, here are some more videos for you to watch.